when you discover the Atacama Desert at daybreak, you can't help feeling you have journeyed to another world, a world where time has become matter. Within seconds, the Earth is flooded with light. Within hours, these shadows will completely disappear. The salt crystals, shards of gypsum, and rivers of limestone are thousands of years old. The Cordillera's altitude suggests they were formed millions of years ago. People imagine this desert to be everlasting, unchanging, and immune to any form of degradation. To understand how fragile the Atacama actually is, you need to explore it in the footsteps of the desert guides. Three riders, a Chilean and two Finns, are following their guide through the gorges of Moon Valley. Known as the most arid desert in the world, the Atacama, which stretches 3,000 kilometers along the Andes Cordillera, attracts visitors from all over the world. People come here to get up close and personal with the elements for this strange experience called the desert sensation. We're about here. We're going to go through the Cordillera de la Sal, then follow these paths along Cari Gorge. Formerly a fisherman, nothing predestined Ferrolo to be a guide in this patch of desert. Then, one day on horseback, he discovered these landscapes slowly unfolding before his eyes. In these wide open spaces, you get the feeling you're the first to set foot here. It is a fabulous sensation, discovering it for the first time. And these spaces, the shapes, the tones, the shadows, the nuances, and this immense sky, this sensation of space and freedom that you feel when you're riding, that's what I want to share. I have always enjoyed it. It's the first thing that struck me. Every time I ride here, I have the same sensation. You travel within yourself. Your horse has a rhythm, and that makes you enter your own inner rhythm, different to your neighbors. They're fleeting sensations, but they're very strong. Faced with an influx of visitors, the Chileans had to get organized. In 1998, the indigenous law handed over the management of some territories to the native peoples of Chile. The Licanantai people has proudly shared the responsibility of running some of its natural parks ever since. Good evening, my name's Maria. Welcome to the Sala de Atacama. All the guides are inhabitants of the village of Tokanao, which was put in charge of the Pink Flamingo Park. Five million years ago, this spot was home to a vast saltwater lake. But the water slowly evaporated, leaving behind a crust of salt that is more than 1,400 meters thick in parts. This salar, or salt flat, is one of the desert's most popular spots. 
It is also one of the most fragile. When we're by the lagoons, you mustn't disturb the birds or make too much noise. Lagoons have formed on the salt. They are home to an extremely rich ecosystem. A pocket of life in the middle of the desert. Manuel worked as a guide here for years. For him, protecting the Salar means, above all, communicating the love he feels for this place. I feel proud to show people all this, to see to it that they all feel welcome, as if it were their home, to make them feel, for a moment, they are part of my life. And to break down the barrier the distance that exists between me and the tourists, so that for a minute or so, they feel part of our culture. A few kilometers from San Pedro, in the quieter oasis of Coyo, the development of tourism is an opportunity. It is also a story of encounters. Carlos and Sandra come from very different worlds. From a long line of sheepmen, she is a shepherdess who moved with the seasons as a child. He grew up in the city, where his father worked as a miner. Although he was raised far from the land, Carlos never forgot it. His dream was to get closer to Likanantai traditions. When he returned to the desert, he met Sandra. He told her everything he knew about people from elsewhere. She taught him what she knew about animals, and together they began to organize llama caravans for the tourists. When I arrived here, there was no work, there was nothing. So it was a matter of finding a way to support my family. The only thing I've done since I arrived here is constantly learn new things. And frankly, this new way of life is definitely the best thing that's ever happened to me. With Sandra, what has happened to us is really magical. Don't you agree? Yes, magical. It's a beautiful thing. What I believe is, when you actually live here, in the desert, you can really feel the energy of the place. The energy, which is here in the desert, is given to us by Mother Earth, by Patarui. I think the people who come here can feel this magic. They can feel this spark of nature and the force of the desert. In the desert, there may not be much vegetation, but there's an energy, a force, a pureness. Not far from the oasis of Coyo lies a group of archaeological sites dating back to the origins of the Likanantai people. To the east, Likan Kabur volcano, a male symbol according to Indian legends. To the west, Kiman, a female mountain. 
between the two, as if it had been engendered by this pair of giants, stands Tulor. This ancestral village has withstood the test of time for almost 2,500 years. And the Indian earth has still not managed to swallow it up. The belly of Patarui, Mother Earth, is marbled with salt and crisscrossed with secret passages carved out by violent rains. A mountain guide, Dagoberto Peña, knows all these tunnels by heart. For the past two years, he has been working out a caving circuit. Two years of researching underground and of discussions with the seven Indian communities that have joint responsibility for Moon Valley, under which this network of tunnels passes. The Indian communities have developed tourist products in Moon Valley, which enable us to organize tourism in the valley. But it has become necessary to take appropriate measures to relieve those areas where tourism is concentrated. This will enable us to do several things. Firstly, to protect the desert because tourism will be spread more evenly throughout the valley. Secondly, it will provide locals with a source of employment. Lastly, it will put this place on the map, which was previously unknown. With the circuit opening in a month's time, Dagoberto is completing the training of three young would-be guides. In a short while, they will be welcoming the public in the very spot where their fathers once worked as miners. Not all the mines have disappeared. On the contrary, copper and especially lithium mining companies are flourishing in the region, siphoning away the Atacama's most precious resource, water. Water is one of Carlos Aguilar's causes. He is a respected representative of the Indian community and a member of the Atacama People's Council. The elements with whom we share this space are constantly irrigated, be it the water, the earth, the plants, the animals. The native peoples are water. People are water. We can't disassociate ourselves from this god. The village lies at the confluence of two small rivers that run down from the Cordillera. In the desert, the question of water is obviously vital. The water arrives in each garden according to the strictest of protocols and calendars. Carlos kills time as he waits for his neighbor to open the small gates between each plot of land. Every 20 days, he is allowed 18 minutes of water to irrigate his alfalfa, his corn, and his garden. You can hear the water coming. It arrives singing like this. This river water is all the more necessary as the groundwater is in danger. No one really knows how long it will be before it runs out under the impact of mining and tourism. So anyone planning to open a new hotel in the area must first negotiate access to water. It took this hotel two years to obtain planning permission. According to the agreement, the hotel cannot draw water from the canal that crosses its property. 
but it can extract the groundwater. In exchange, the hotelier promised to blend the hotel into the landscape, to give work to the area's artisans and to employ the local workforce. At the Likanantai C30 High School in San Pedro, Daniela is a final year pupil. Her uniform is that worn by all pupils on sandwich training. One week at school, one week at the hotel. A trainee guide, she is being taught the ropes by Pamela. I'm discovering the area. The tourist sites around San Pedro de Atacama. I'm learning about their importance. I may have lived here for 17 years, but I didn't actually know everything there is to know about the beauty spots in the area. Up at 4.30, departure at 5. A 100-kilometer journey north to one of the wonders of Latin America. At 4,300 meters altitude, the cold prevents the mist from dispersing. But with the first rays of sun, the misty veil will part to reveal a sight Daniela has never seen. This is the first time the young trainee has ventured into this part of the desert. Before they get out, the most important thing is to warn them that it's a dangerous place. Tell them to walk slowly because we're at altitude. You have to warn them. Tatio Giza field. A hundred geysers spitting out water that is almost 90 degrees Celsius and propelling the spectator back to the dawn of time. For those who got up before daybreak, the reward has an unreal quality. A dip in a warm water pool before traveling back to San Pedro. It's 10.30, the ritual is unchanging. The warm air chases away the plumes of steam rising from the geysers and causes the minibuses to leave. Nothing in this desert is on a human scale, and it is hard to comprehend why people feel so at home here. Zahel Quezada came to the area 20 years ago. In the days when the dictatorship had isolated Chile from the world, discovering the immensity of this landscape was a real revelation. The desert is alive. In this immensity, which appears to be wilderness, there is life. Everything is alive. The immensity is life. The silence is life. It has a pulse, a rhythm. When we actually manage to make people experience this, then they become one with the desert's rhythm and pulse.
Frank Gülseman is one of his clients who is keen to travel off the beaten track. Far from it, even. He is here to attempt to walk across the most arid part of the desert, 600 kilometers across the Descampado of Atacama. Funny road. Red road. Back in Germany, Frank works as a chemist in a sports performance research institute. But he isn't here to beat any records. When you leave the last oasis behind you, you are totally alone. You know there are no settlements within a 50 kilometer radius. In the distance, you see clouds of dust from cars, and it's very existential. You are extremely focused on the main things, progressing, finding your way and water. It isn't necessarily meditative, because it's tiring to walk. But the fact is, you are faced with yourself. How many liters? Fifteen. Good luck, Frank. Thanks. You're welcome. Ciao. Ciao. Days later, Zael learns that Frank has pulled it off. Exhausted, 10 kilos lighter, he managed to get to a mining village from where he reached Santiago, then Germany. Virtually unexplored in parts, victim of its success in others, the Atacama's only defenders are these few guides. Following in their footsteps, seeing the desert through their eyes is the only way to understand it as it really is. Inorganic, yet alive. Depopulated, yet inhabited. Strong, but immensely fragile. <laughs> 